Today we're going to look at the benefits of product variety and the effect of international trade on variety. People are different. Tastes differ. Even for a good as simple as peanut butter. Some people like crunchy peanut butter. Other people like it smooth. Some people like it salty. Other people prefer it sweet. We can think about welfare as declining the further away a good is from a person's tastes in some kind of taste space. So more goods means that a person is more likely to find a good which is closer or closest to their particular type of taste. So variety can bring a lot of benefits. Of course, variety can sometimes also be a little bit confusing or overwhelming, especially if it's a good for which we don't care much about. Some people don't even care much about peanut butter, so the variety of peanut butter can be a little bit overwhelming. But usually, variety is a small price to pay in order to better match our taste with products. More products, more variety, is also beneficial for producer goods, for intermediate goods. These are some goods from orthopedic surgery, for example. A long time ago, we used to just use you know, a hammer and chisel. Now we have more specialized, more designed goods, which are more specific and more tailored to a particular job. And that increases productivity. So more variety means closer to a person's tastes, and more variety means higher productivity for a particular task. So why can't consumers and producers have exactly their most desired good. The reason is, is that for many goods, there are economies of scale. And this means there's a trade-off between variety and average cost. So for many goods, the cost of producing the good falls the greater the number of goods which are produced. The cost per unit, or the average cost, falls the greater the quantity produced. So this means that if every individual had exactly the good which they most desired, the average cost would be very high. Instead, we accept a trade-off. We produce fewer varieties. Each one of those varieties, we produce a greater quantity, pushing the average cost down. One of the great benefits of international trade is it makes the trade-off between variety and average cost easier to bear. We can get more variety at lower cost. I'm going to give a simple example from Melitz and Treffler. Let's build this example with some assumptions. Suppose it takes four workers to design an automobile. And once designed, let's suppose it takes one worker to build an automobile. There are two countries, and each country has 12 workers. So let's look at one of these countries. It's got 12 workers. What are the things that that country can produce? What are the production possibilities for the country with 12 workers? So assume now there's no trade. Well, one thing a country could do is have four workers to design a single automobile, then have eight workers producing automobiles. So you end up with eight automobiles of one type of variety. Another thing you could do is to have two sets of four designers. Remember, it takes four workers to design an automobile. So that'll get you two designs. Then you've got four workers left over, so you can have two units of each designer, two units of two varieties. OK. Now, what can we do with trade? Well, with trade, suppose we do the following. We now have the, we'll look at both countries. Let's suppose each country specializes. Country one has the uh, green specialization, and therefore workers produce one variety, of which they then produce eight units of that variety. The other, the blues, therefore workers design one variety, and they produce eight units of that variety. So far, it's the same situation as A, this situation here. But now with trade, suppose that they trade four units of one variety for four units of the other variety. What ends up to be the case then? Each country has eight units of two varieties. So notice that with trade, the countries are better off. So compared to situation A, in which there was eight units of one variety, each country now has eight units of two varieties. Compared with situation B, in which there were two units of two varieties, that is, four units overall, we now have four units of two varieties, that is, eight units overall. So we've got, compared to one situation, we've got more variety. Compared to the other situation, we've got more units. Either way, we are better off. 
Big advantage of international trade increases variety. So I cheated a little bit on the last slide, and I want to say how. I showed you on the last slide that international trade could lead to a better trade-off between variety and average cost, could get us more variety at lower average cost. But I didn't provide a mechanism for how markets would make that happen. I didn't show you how the free market could or would lead to that particular outcome. And this turns out to be quite a difficult problem. So when lots of firms have these declining average cost curves, it turns out to be quite difficult to figure out how the market will trade off variety with average cost, how the market process will result in that particular outcome. There are, in fact, a variety of theories along these lines, all fall under the title of monopolistic competition. By the way, Paul Krugman, who did pioneering work in this area, sometimes it said, well, what did Paul Krugman get the Nobel Prize for? And people say, well, he got it for showing that international trade also has the benefit of providing lots of variety. And people would say, well, what was so hard about that? Who didn't know that? You get more variety when you import goods. Well, that's only partially true. What he really did was to show how the economics of monopolistic competition would lead to a process such that international trade would generate you a better variety average cost trade-off. He explained how the market process would work. That turned out to be quite a difficult problem, which is why he got the Nobel Prize for it. The mathematics are quite complicated. I'm going to give you some of the intuition in a later slide. Here's another interesting point about globalization and variety. I've said that globalization increases variety, but actually globalization reduces geographic variety. More places start to look the same at the same time as it increases preference variety or the variety actually available to individuals. Let's go back to our earlier example. Suppose we have no trade and we have these two countries. Well, now a traveler, a tourist, going from the green country to the blue country will say, look how different they do things here. They're blue here, and my home country is green. And a blue traveler going to the green country will say, wow, look how different things are here. They've got green here in my own country. They've got blue. But remember what trade does. With international trade, you've got a swap of blues and greens, and now a traveler going from one country to the other will say, well, they've got blues and greens here just like they have in my home country. So geographic variety declines. However, for people, for individuals, every individual in the world now has greater access to variety. And that's really what we care about. We care not that places are different, but that people have access to many different tastes and experiences. By the way, uh, Tyler Cowen made this very clearly in his excellent book, In Praise of Commercial uh, Culture. Tyler pointed out that what globalization does is it makes China, it brings KFC to China at the same time as there are great Chinese restaurants in the United States. So China and the United States begin to look a little bit more similar, even though Chinese and Americans both benefit from globalization bringing greater variety to their countries. Some estimates have been made of the benefits to increase variety, and they turn out to be quite substantial. So from 1972 to 2001, the number of product varieties imported into the United States increased by a factor of three. And by one calculation, consumers would be willing to pay 2.6% of their income to buy in the larger 2001 supermarket than from the smaller 1972 supermarket. 2.6% of their income just for more variety. That's pretty big. And remember, increased variety also benefits producers by giving them access to tools which are more precisely tuned to exactly the job that they want to do. So it increases productivity. This has been less well estimated, but I think it's also important in my view. Okay, here's some further readings, most of which can easily be found on the web. This is Paul Krugman's 1979 piece, Increasing Returns, Monopolistic Competition in International Trade. It's the piece which made Krugman's reputation and was a foundation for a lot of his Nobel Prize work. An excellent uh, review of some of this material is in uh, Malitz and Daniel Treffler, Gains from Trade When Firms Matter. You can find that free on the web. It's from the Journal of Economic Perspectives. It's a very accessible paper. 
uh, estimating the gains from uh, more product variety, Broda and uh, Weinstein. Uh, quite a difficult paper, but a worthwhile one to read. And of course, don't forget Tyler Cowen's excellent book in praise of commercial culture. Many good reasons to read that book. Thanks.